Hello and welcome to my knife channel. Well, this might be a long video because I'm going to go through some of my earliest knives that I had. And they mostly consist of Buck and Gerber. So I'll start off with this Buck 110. Um, I had two identical Buck 110s. Well, they weren't exactly identical. One was uh, when I was in the military. I made the sheath. And it was because I was in the Air Force. Um, the Air Force back then, and uh, I went in in 1975. Back then, they kind of frowned on do you having any weapons on you for some reason. <laughs> You're in the military, but they didn't want you to have what they considered a weapon, which would be like a pocket knife, like this. And so I made this out of webbing so that I could wear this knife. Well, later on, I got married, and my wife liked the Buck 110, so I bought one for her also. Uh, the reason why I say that this is basically her knife, uh, ex-wife, ex so when we got a divorce, we split up everything, and she took what was supposed to be her knife, but was actually originally mine. But anyways, it didn't matter, one Buck 110 from another. This one is a two dot, and you can see through right here that it's been dragged through a pole, a pole sharpener. I know how to sharpen now. I thought I knew how to sharpen back then, but uh, at one time or another, it got attacked by a pole sharpener. The profile is different. It's a really upswept, almost like Persian type clip on this clip point. A uh, nice hollow grind and everything. I added this clip here to it. It has a very nice wood grain. I don't know what they called that. I don't remember what kind of pattern that was, but it's really nice. Pattern wood. You can see the pins sticking through. There's one over there. This I scraped off recently. That's why it's all shiny. I scraped that off recently because there was some a glob of something on there. But you can see how pull sharpeners don't do a very good job. They scrape up the edge of the blade. You really probably shouldn't be using it on a hollow grind anyway. But I've never gone around and gone back to fix this because I don't use it anymore. Um, I don't carry it anymore. I don't use it anymore. I probably eventually get around to taking care of it but that's the buck 110 that was my first back in the day you couldn't get anything that was you know i mean you could add studs and stuff like that and there were switch blades there were automatic knives and stuff like that but those were mostly stilettos italian type stilettos and everything and they were legal if you got caught with them you could get a much bigger fine like a felony compared to maybe a misdemeanor for a regular knife so Anyway, for a long time, this thing's heavy. It's like seven ounces or something. And uh, it got the job done. But, I mean, you know, it's a folding hunter. You know, most times you're not hunting. And you don't need to carry all that weight. And it's a, a belt knife, you know. I mean, there's no clip on it and everything. So, I was looking for something better. And uh, I went with the Gerber Easy Out in... ATS-34. Back then, that was uh, a super steel. It's the semi-serrated blade. I, I don't like serrated blades anymore. But it has a nice part here that's non-serrated. It has an eye-opening type thing. It's strange. I like this knife so much. But at the time when Spyderco was coming out, uh, I, I completely... I didn't like the looks of Spyderco. Actually, a hole is easier to open than this, but I like this. It's just a lockback, uh, mid-lockback. You can open it one hand. It has a built-in clip, non-interchangeable, non-positionable. You know, you just tip down is all you got. You don't, you don't have a choice on that. But it was a good knife for the longest time. It um, kept me, got me by. Gerber also has this, uh, it, it's like an axis lock, 
but they call it a bolt action back then. It locks in place. I carried this one quite a bit too. It doesn't have any uh, pocket clips on it. It has a lanyard hole. Uh, once again, the edge has been pretty much butchered. Um, but yeah, you just pull this back to close it. It doesn't swing, you know, like an axis lock. It's just, I guess they call it a bolt action lock, but it locks back here like that. Yeah, so I carried that one a lot. Then there's, they had two sizes of these. I don't know where my other one is. This is the smaller one. It has a half stop, just like the, uh, I was going to mention that. They're mid locks, but they have a half stop. You can kind of see it right in there. This is just another little back lock. Let me show you. Not this one. This Gerber didn't have a half stop. But this Easy Out did. Right there. Strange. The uh, Buck 110 doesn't have one. Alright, going along. Then, at one time, I have got this one. This is a Gerber. The tip is... Uh, reprofile because it was actually sharpening this at one time but this is just a boot knife type of thing it's got some rust or pieces of leather on it and it comes in this sheath it clips in right there on like that and it's just a belt sheath type thing leather all right, let's zoom back out. So that's that Gerber. All right, so we go back back to the, one of the first ones. This is a Buck 110. You can see right here the leather is... At one time or another, had a dog that chewed on this. They don't know the difference between a chew toy and a, a leather, and if it gets a hold of it. This is a Buck 121. It's supposed to be like a fillet knife. Now, I can tell from this one, I was looking at it, Buck didn't start stamping their blades... Buck USA until ni after 1968. Um, I went in the service in 1975. I used to use this as my fishing knife and stuff when I was a kid. This doesn't have the back end. There were some versions that had a fish scaler on there. It's not super, I mean, it's a hollow grind, but it's not super flexible like a really razor thin knife. But yeah, I've had this one, I would say it's somewhere between 1968 and 1972 or somewhere around there. So probably early 70s is the date on this one. Comes with a, you know, a buck sheath. And friction fits in there and then you've got a clip to hold it in. And yeah, this is over 50, over 50 years old, that knife. And then I've shown this one before, but this is the Gerber Mark II. Oops, I knocked something over doing that. It had been in very good shape most of its life. And then I came to Texas and forgot that Texas is uh, has high humidity. And this is not a stainless steel blade. So I've had to take steel wool to it to knock off the actual rust that was there. But yeah, it's an aluminum handle. Gerber Mark II. I got that one when I was in the military also. I'd say this was in the uh, 80s. So there you go. No, that would... This one would be early 80s because i know i had it in when i was in england 70s late 70s early 80s anyways yeah there you go there's some of my earliest knives um i don't have anything coming in right now as far as like um stuff through the mail stuff like that but strategic hair command Right, so thank you for watching, and have a nice day.